Francesc, it is a uh, uh, special situation, I guess, with the storm, Kai Pasol, Camaroforo. So we're going to try to get out of here as soon as possible to Avaskere. And but uh, I that uh, maybe there's some members of the church that they can pull live, and that maybe later for YouTube channel. So God bless everybody. Con God di Kelly, amen. Um, so Ariad, come out to to dance Duma about a storm. <laughs> uh, there is a storm approaching, and um, in the storms on the Bible, Chacheske Butivar, they can come out of nowhere. You can't prepare sometimes for it. Um, it's called trouble. And the Bible, o trobulo, botivar si sariek storm, amen. And kamle mas te jaskan de ke Bibles to Job chapter 14, verse 1. Dixo pindia o Job, how frail is humanity, how short is life, how full of trouble. How frail is humanity, that means how weak, how short is life, and how full of trouble. If you don't like what Job said, well, this is what Jesus said. <laughs> John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Now, Chaches, uh, we... We thank Jesus for overcoming the world. We like that part of the verse. But let us not forget that, O oh Jesus, Pindia, we will have on earth many trials and sorrows. Um, troubles are like a storm, Pindia. And put those couple of pictures there. That's actually the hurricane before it got closer to Texas, so don't be afraid. Um, thank God it really got lowered down to a category one or something like that. But Butivar uh, Trobulo can catch you by surprise. Sometimes you, you expect it. Like sometimes somebody did something and they know the trouble's coming. But then sometimes you didn't do nothing and trouble just surprises you. Uh, sometimes it's small, sometimes it's just too much to handle. Otrobulo, butivar, if we compare it to a storm, sometimes it can flood our mind. On the Houston, we get street flooding, but in the troubles of life, on the trobulo amaroguindo, our mind can be flooded with doubts and fears. And um, that is something that trouble does. It begins to attack our faith. It begins to create a doubt on the manos. Fear is always elevated during trouble, during a trial, during a storm, right? And what happens also in a storm? You can be without lights or Penelas or Randy. And if you don't have a generator, you're in trouble. And I put down there that ando trobulo, ando les storms, butivar, we have no sense of direction. Uh, the way that jantar lelempi chijan es kaisan and you're afraid and you're trying to find a candle, something so that you can see where you're going, where, where you're at. But even ando trayo abel kasabo trobulo po manus that you don't know where you're at, where you're going. You night to direction ando trayo. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 And uh, so I guess very as short as possible i like to give you something that's necessary in a storm and that is three anchors for the storm three anchors for the storm three anchors for the storm anchors are something that hold you down no matter the wind no matter the waves avela barbal avela talazuria a anchor ankerel le manuses and uh oswato le devlesco the Bible is an anchor for our soul, amen? amen? And in Scripture, we find different anchors that can help us with the problem of the 
And I pray that you're paying attention today because like we learned uh, maybe a couple months ago, Randy preached, either you are heading to a storm, you're in a storm, or you just got out of a storm waiting for the next one. No, there is no way to avoid the storm. In other words, there's no way to avoid trouble. If you are living and on earth, trouble will come in different ways. So storms will come. And it's those with the anchors, Mukhaprang, that will be secure in the storm, that will be uh, anchored in the storm. And um, I just want to give you these three anchors. So Del Diamagako message maybe about nine, ten years ago. And I looked at it today again, added a few scriptures to it, and I said, this is needed again right now for our church. So uh, let's go to our first, let's try to find our first anchor here in Luke 22, verse 31 to 32. Katseo Jesus del Dumaka Peter calls him by his original Hebrew name. Peter is a nickname, Kadialis of Jesus. Simon is his real name. And you will know this scripture when I read it. Peneles que o Jesus, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you men like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So this is the time, Kao Jesus Pendialing, I'm going to be betrayed. They will crucify me. I'm going to, I'm going to be killed. Uh, the third day I'll rise again. So he's announcing Pesco departure, Pesco Pesci Martia. And as we know with the story of Peter Pendialis, que Lord, even if all abandon you, I'll never abandon you. Even if all deny you, I'll never deny you. Say, Serati, te del Duma, te Penel, no matter what these other guys do or say, because of Jesus Pendialis, says, all of you will abandon me. Okay, oh no, maybe them, not me. And then Jesus reveals to him, Simon, Simon, behold. In other words, pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. First of all, he calls his name twice, then he says, behold. So that's like, Red alert. Red alert to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat. And uh, that is something that reminds us of what story? Job. That's the last time in Scripture, Kaidikas, Satan approaching God to ask for permission to do something to one of his people. Job was a righteous man, a man of faith. And so, permission Well, again, Satan is doing this. In the spiritual realm, sometimes things happen that we don't even know about. Peter had no idea Satan was demanded, demanding God to allow him to uh, sift this man. In other words, the... Uh, to bring trouble to him, to 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 uh, to to shake him up very violently. That's the word to be shaken violently, and it's not physically, but it was the trial that was going to be upon him, which was the pressure to accept or deny he, uh, the Lord. So, there's a lot of things that we don't know. Peter didn't know. Here he is, I'm the man, I'm your number one disciple. All of these guys, I can't say, maybe they'll deny you or not, but I'm telling you right now, Jesus, I'm willing to die with you. I'm going to die for you. And little did he know that in the spirit realm, there was a meeting going on about him between Satan and God. And Jesus on earth, Dixo Penel, but I have prayed for you. What a comfort to know that no matter what happens, Jesus is there. The Bible of Karel is the great high priest, the one that intercedes for us. Amen? Now, what is Jesus praying for? For him not to go through the storm or for him to have faith in the midst of the storm. 
Tixo Penel, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. So this was going to be a test of his faith. And Jesus just revealed to him uh, that he's going to have to go through it. Jesus did not tell him, I'm praying that you don't have to go through this. Or oh, Jesus Peñales, I'm praying that your faith will not fail as you're going through this. But then oh, Jesus not only revealed that to him, but he also revealed to him the outcome. Look at it there. When you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. You're, you're going to go through it. I'm praying that your faith will be strong. And I'm telling you, you will come back. Because we all know he failed. Did Peter fail? He failed. But it was a momentary failure. Because after the resurrection, Jesus meets him. He sees Jesus alive. The Lord restored him. He came back to his brothers. He strengthened them. Amen. So... The, what I find here in our first anchor is this, your faith. Opakiamos mureprao is an anchor to keep us in the storm. Our faith in God will anchor us through the strongest storms of life. Can I get an amen? Paralale bipakiamasco, we're going to fail. If our faith is not in God, if our faith is in ourselves, if our faith is in our experience, well, missing Manus Harano, I know how to, I've been through this before, I have experience, I have, uh, I know people, or um, I have money, or whatever things that you might be dependent on in storms. Um, I need to tell you something if it's not faith in God, it's all weak. It might get you by for a season. It might get you by for a time. But unless we have our faith rooted on the deal, um, we're going to fail. It is just a, um, it's, it's, it's a time bomb, really. Faith on the deal, what does that mean? Faith in His purpose for me. Kana sana de trobulo. Kanasanandik storm, a trial of life. You have to go back to understanding through Scripture that God has a purpose for your life. That even though maybe you're hazy right now, chidikes misto, chaliares misto, but trubulte jane si vare kono pralpa storm, my kodos yodil. Odel never gets hazy. God never, his vision is never blurry, Paul. God never has a, a migraine headache or uh, the, the trouble's too much. The church is going through too much. God never scratches his head. God never paces in heaven, in the hallways of heaven, thinking, how am I going to get him out of this one? Odel Janil Sashavali. God is sovereign. God is almighty. God is God. Is God. Janil Odel Sashavali. He knows the end before it even begun. God is eternal. Amen? Amen. And so that puts an anchor in my soul that my faith is in God. Even though I don't understand, even though I don't see, but I trust that Odil Dikel. And that His purpose for me is secure. Amen? Amen? Let me give you some scriptures. Romans, Romans 8. 28 to 29. And we know, Dixo Penelo Paul, and we know, in other words, I have the certainty, I don't doubt this. What, Paul? That God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Oh, Paul Pendia, no matter what happens, God knows how to cause all things, good, bad, ugly, to work together for good. God knows how to turn bad situations into a positive situation. God knows how to take storms of life, trials, tribulations, and use them for the purpose of good. Who does God do, do, does this for? Those who 
love God. Those who are called according to His purpose. So these are the type of scriptures, kaidename faith and odil, to be able to endure such trials and tribulations. James, we're in James, right? James 1, verse 2 to 4, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing, pali, knowing, key word, the way Paul said, and we know that God causes all things. Now James Pennell, knowing, in other words, we are certain, we understand, we know, we are sure of what, James? That the testing of your faith produces. The testing of your faith produces. Faith in God, Mugipral, faith in His purpose for me, understanding, Mugipral, that God is using trials to bring a test upon my faith that my faith will begin to produce endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete. That, that word, don't let it scare you. Perfect and complete. All it means, it's a Greek word meaning maturity. God is taking you from one place to another. Teleos is a word that... Uh, uh, People use also for a telegraph or a telescope. It's something that uh, uh, goes from one place to another, like the pirate's telescope that extends to be able to reach further out. Uh, a, a teleport is something that is here, but now is over here, right? And the amado fate, and the amado testing of our fate. God telling us begins to move us, to stretch us, to get from immaturity to maturity, from doubting to trusting. Do you understand, Mugipral? So you have to understand that trials not in time. There is a purpose on the Amare trials. And that purpose is that Odell is maturing us. Odell is working with us. Uh, even though it might hurt, it might trouble you, but Odel Janel so trubul kamaropakiamos. God knows how to stretch us, my brothers, my sisters. Dixo Penelando, Hebrews 12 10. Speaking about our earthly fathers, it says, For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he, Odel, disciplines us for our good so that we may share His holiness. So, Mugepral, there is a time, that He needs to bring a discipline upon us in order to create holiness in us. In order for us to be set apart, in order for us to um, live more righteously, sometimes God, as a good Father, has to discipline us. Amen? And then, Dika, 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7, in this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, Peter is talking to Christians that were scattered, Christians that were being persecuted. I penelinge, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. O Peter Penelcal Christiaia, your faith is being tested the way that the refiner tests the gold in fire to remove the, pure, the impurities so that the gold becomes purer. God is the refiner of our faith so that our faith may be tested through trials and tribulations so that it could be found to result, to produce what? Praise, glory, and honor. Praise, glory, and honor. To who? To God. Amarotrayo. Through trials and tribulations, God uses them in order for our life to bring glory to God. So, an anchor for us in the trials of life is our faith in God. In the purpose of God for me, 
in His promises for me, I can put my faith in God because there's promises. Like Isaiah 46, 4, even to your old age, I will be the same, Penelodil. And even to your graying years, that means when your hair gets gray, I will bear you. When you get old, I will bear you. Man, get off to, I have done it, and I will carry you, and I will bear you, and I will deliver you. This is a promise, Katarodil. Like Psalm 68, 19, blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden. How often? Daily. The God who is our salvation, Selah. We can put our faith on Dodel because he has a purpose for me. He has a promise that he's with me, carries me, carries my burdens daily and also promises a way of escape. Understanding that something to come to our life that we cannot handle. As much as we think we cannot handle it, God promised this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. In other words, whatever you're going through, other people are going through it. Even though you feel like maybe you're the only person going through this, there is other people going through it because it's common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. So God is there. God is faithful. He knows how much we can handle. And these are the things that allow me to easily put my faith in God. I don't have to struggle to believe that God has a plan and a purpose for me in trials, that God gave me promises in the trials and that God loves me. Do you believe that God loves you? You know how important that is in your life to understand that Almighty God loves you? I can go Penele Bible in Romans 8, 35 to 39. It says that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. So these are just a few things, but there's more things that can give you that anchor of faith, the anchor called faith, penmansa faith. Let's put our faith in God. Amen. Amen. Let's find our second anchor in Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity, or a time of adversity. Somebody said this, good friends are like stars. They come out in the darkest of nights. Pralale, I hope you found the second anchor. What do you think it is, Randy? Yes. Friends, Mughal is, is is so important uh, when you're going through a storm. Uh, friends have the ability to uh, cause you to fail in your test and trial. Or friends have the ability to help you endure and be victorious in your test and trials. Frenuria kanasi lumiake, they have a way of helping you through your trouble. They offer, let's go out, let's have some drinks, I di pias, I di chas, let's just take a night out, um, let's go to a club, let's um, take this pill, pika uh, drop. And there's people that that is their way of comforting their friends. But Chachi those are, those are not good friends. Um, those are, they might be friends, but they are, they are lost friends. They don't know Jesus. But yek freno, kai chaches prinjarele devles. A friend that is a person that is inspired by the Holy Spirit, moved by the Holy Spirit, knows the Lord, he will never offer drugs and alcohol 
and a good time out to his friend that's going through something. But he'll offer good advice. Amen. He'll offer prayer. He'll offer a shoulder to cry on. He will offer help. So, Frenurian, or Proverbs 17, 17, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. It, it, when do you need your brothers? When do you need your friends the most? When you need them the most. And that's during, during trials and tribulations. Trubultu manus. To help you carry the burden. Paul needed his friends to visit him when he was in prison. 2 Timothy 4, 9 and 11. Dixo Penel, make every effort to come to me soon. Only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. He needed his friends in his, in his prison time, in his, and not knowing what was going to happen to him. He wanted Pesquefrenuria Pasa Peste. How about old Peter? He needed his friends to pray for him. Penele Bible in Acts 12, verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church to God. And then, O oh Jesus... He needed his friends to keep watch with him. Matthew 26, 38, Penel, Then he said to them, Peter, James, and John, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Remain here and just keep watch with me. Jesus didn't ask him, defend me, uh, bring swords, Clubs, Aninkas, Anin Sabi, uh, you know they're after me. Judas is going to show up any minute. Uh, all he wanted from them was keep watch. I'm just asking you to keep watch. And we know the story, right? They all fell asleep. He came back to them and said, The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, Lord. You can't even pray for an hour. You can't keep watch with me for an hour. He went back. He came back. Saw them sleeping again. But look at that. Can I ask you a question? Does Jesus know everything? Well, that's a trick question, right? Because maybe in his incarnation, he gave certain privileges he put to the side. But I do believe that he knew that even though he was calling them to keep watch with him, that they would, that they would fall asleep. Sure. So here's the thing. He knows they're going to fall asleep. He still counted on them. He still called them. And he needed his friends. You can get into a big theological debate about it, but at the end of the day, Jesus needed his friends, plain and simple. Even if they were going to be there sleeping. <laughs> He still called them. Shavali, Paul needed his friends to visit him in prison. Peter needed his friends to pray for him. Jesus needed his friends to just keep watch. And it just shows me that in our storms, in our trials, you might isolate people. You might think you got it figured out, or you just don't want nobody getting involved in your business. But that's a bad way to talk. Yeah. That's a bad way to think. Pralale, we need each other. Now we can also take this to uh, directly que familia also, not just your friends, but your family. A husband needs a, a godly wife in the midst of the storms that Peneleske na mektu, jangle. Uh, let's continue to pray. Trust the Lord. No, Shay, I'm giving up. Uh, where is God? I don't understand. Why are we going through this? A godly wife needs to be there to hold the fortress. No, we're going to trust the Lord. The Bible says that He's got us. The Bible says that He's with us. Bray, don't lose it. It's going to be all right. Now let's flip it on the other side. Sometimes the women, the wife, she can lose it. Where is God? I don't want to go to church. Why is nothing changing? Etc. 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 And Cochetrubulo Murs, the Penel. You know what, Shay? 
don't worry, God is with us. I don't know how it's going to happen. I, I, I don't see it either, but I trust that God is sovereign because the Bible says in Isaiah 46, 4, that even at our old age, God is still the same. And even when we get old, He bears us. And it says that He'll carry us and that He will deliver us. Shay, our faith is be being tested. Instead of asking why God, how about we ask what for God? Or how God? Or what, instead of why, what are you using this for, Lord? Show me. Are you maturing me in a certain area that I don't know about? Teach me to trust you, Devla. Instead of complaining, how about we begin to pray? And ask for wisdom, Sarpenelo James. In other words, all I'm telling you is what we learn in church has to be put into practice. So go to Ezekiel Sunday, Kangari, Bible studies, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Sunday. We can't just forget about it on, when we go through a trouble. Canavelo trouble, nastis bistra side Bible. Nastis de bistra samare Bible studies. We can't do that, Joey. That's the time where we need to. Put our faith on Dodil. Everything we read, everything we taught people, every text message we shared, every text message we received, every Bible study we attended to, Sunday, Thursday, when, women's meetings, men's meetings, what are we doing all of this for? If when we go through trouble and trials, I extorm, sabistras. Somol, Antunchi. You understand what I'm saying? Why did we drive to church in a storm if we don't apply the Word of God to our life, it makes no sense, Mughe Pral. But Pralale, we need to apply Le Devleski Vorba Kamano Praye. Nastis te me casa me. We need to remember the Word and trust in that Word like an anchor for the soul. Amen. So our anchor is our faith and Odil in His purpose, in His promises, in His passion for me, in friends and family, Saro Paul, Saro Peter, Esarvi, O Jesus, O Shaule de Vlesco, that constantly called upon His friends to be with Him. And last, let's find it here. Acts 16, 22 to 25, familiar. We preached about it. We taught about it not too long ago. O Paul of Silas, Canasas on the Robia. I Mardele, and they dragged him. They beat him up. They attacked him. Dixo Penel, the crowd joined in an attack against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off, off of them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. That means cas, I marenle, I marenle. All right. When they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. And the cas, pangleli, pangleli, and godola. And they go to Arobia in the inner cell, maximum security. But then, amazingly, verse 25 says, Now about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. It's like night and day, right, Joey? We just read the darkest of the darkest from 22 to 24. Beaten, in jail, Feed in stocks, uh, beaten with rods, uh, attack against them. That's all dark. And then suddenly there's a change in verse 25. Now, about midnight, when it got the darkest, Paul and Silas began to turn on a light. What's that light? Well, I want to call it your praise. Amen. That's a third anchor I want to give you today from Scripture. Praise opens a door out of the natural storm and into the presence of our Savior. 
It was dark in that cell. Don't kid yourself. It was bad. Mardele, they're hurting all over. Big. sometimes you just hit your finger against something. I crazy. Uy, oh man, miris. You hit your foot against something. I under she bought this. But <laughs> they're being attacked and beaten with rods, with castinsa mardel. So could you imagine the pain in them? In jail, in prison, for what? For stealing, for killing somebody? No. For preaching the gospel and delivering a woman. Remember a, a, a slave girl, Kaisasdra Barni, that had a spirit of divination and they, oh, Paul cast a spirit out of her. They're doing God's work. They don't deserve to be in there. They deserve to be praised. Let's have a healing service and a delivering service with Paul and Silas in our city. No, Mardili. Mardili. Are they bruised? More than sure. Hey, I can't he even hit one of these knuckles without it I feeling a bump or a bruise. Imagine a karak did my dab castesa. I'm bruised. Suvlosim. Dino dapsim. Maybe I'm bleeding. Had to be. Can't see a thing. It, it's 2,000 years ago. There ain't no reliant energy. No electricity. It's dark. It's so dark that you know the story after everything, the earthquake shook the prison. He had to light a torch on fire to come to inspect to really see if, no, if anybody escaped or not. That means there was no light. It was dark. So they are there, beaten, bleeding, bruised. And very easily their fate could have been and their vision blurred. But instead of complaining, they praised. They praised God because praise has a way of not removing the circumstance, but transporting you to the presence of God. Now, don't get all weird. I'm not talking about chaches. You, you left your body when you praised God. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is there is a spiritual connection to God that praise does. That even in your darkest moment, in that cell, bruised, beaten, and everything, they had the peace and the joy of God. So let's put it this way. Maybe praise doesn't transport you but it transports the presence of God to you. Amen. Maybe they couldn't leave that prison, but the Lord's presence came to them. And let me tell you something, God's presence, it don't need permission. Gates can't stop it, doors can't stop it. A granitza or uh, somebody, nobody can stop the presence of Almighty God to reach a place where people have placed their faith in God and are praising Him. Amen. So, because don't just praise Him after the storm. You got to praise Him during the storm. Amen. When we do this, it proves and it's mature, it's genuine, it's real, and it brings much glory to God. Pralali, it's easy to praise God when it's all over. The storm is over, the sun is out, I got money in the bank, clean health, of, uh, bill of health, reports are great. Pralali, kun, who don't praise God? Iu manus. Non-believer, I could thank you, Jesus, all is well. I would chip a kill chando deal. But pralali, peali, to praise God when I haven't seen any of the things I'm praying for yet. Now that's 
mature faith. Because he praises God not for God to change his circumstances. He praises God for who God is and allows him to dictate how he's going to change it, if he's going to change it, however he wants to do it. I tell you what, a lot of people preach about Acts chapter 16. Praise your way out. The way that the prison shook. Praise will get you out of your prison. Pralali. Paul and Silas was not praying and praising God to get out of jail. Pastor, how do you know that? Because when the jail door was open, they didn't leave. So if in their mind was, let's praise the Lord and maybe God will open the door so we can escape. When the doors open, they would have escaped. That's their answer to our prayer. That's not what they're praying for. They're not praying and singing hymns and praising God. Lord, we're going to do this, but you got to get us out of this prison. There's no conditions. They're praying and praising God. One, because they know God. Because they have mature faith. Because they love the Lord. And they were going to praise Him in the midst of getting beat up and being put in prison for doing His work. Because he promised that he would be with them. And Jesus promised and said, Rejoice when they say all kinds of evil against you. Uh, because that's the way they persecuted the prophets before you. So he said, Rejoice, be glad. You're part of an elite group, a blessed group of people that were before you like the prophets. But can I give you one more reason they praised and prayed? And I told you this many times before. The Bible in verse 25, and the other prisoners were listening. It was the great, great opportunity to show these lost people that their God is real. That they're not going to shut up because they got beaten down. That they'll still believe and trust and worship and praise and honor their God even though because serving their God got them into this prison. Their God is still worthy of praise. If we back up to the first Peter scripture, it's exactly that. Even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor. Is that what came out of Paul and Silas? As they were being tested through that prison, yes, praise, glory, and honor did come out of them. Because that is mature faith. And that is the kind of anchor we need. A praise that allows others to see the reality of our faith. Acts 16.25 but about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So I believe that they probably elevated the volume a little bit extra that night for the purpose of ministering to people that they could have never ministered outside. So they must have thought, if we're in here because we were doing God's will, then we are in God's will in here. So when you're in God's will, you continue to praise, honor, and glorify God. The outcome we know. They got out. The jailer got saved, him and his family. They get baptized that very night. But can I tell you that a lot of Christians never get out, got out of jail? James was beheaded by Herod, uh, the brother of John. Oh, Peter was crucified eventually. 
Well, Paul was beheaded eventually by Nero. Uh, oh, Stephen, the, one of the deacons, stoned to death. And all and many Christians till today, they don't get out of jail. Some of them give their life in those places for the Lord. So we don't praise God to praise our way out. We just praise God because He deserves the praise. Right. Amen? Amen? And let Him get out of us whatever He sees fit. Amen? Conclusions, and uh, we prepare ourselves with communion. I like Serga, Dejutisami with communion, Serga, Mukupral. But let's worship the Lord in one song or a couple of songs, however the Lord leads you, Joey. Here's the conclusion. Do you have an anchor for the storms of life? Have you drifted in the storm because you have no anchor? And last, the Lord showed you three anchors today. Receive them and use them. Your faith in God, friends, family, your praise. Karina Marodel. These are anchors that hold us. And if you've been drifting in trials and tribulation, it's because you're missing an anchor. Let's pray. Devla, Chanches Devla, I pray that you would give us these anchors, Mokodel, that we would receive them. And it all starts, Devla, with our faith in you. It really holds us. Lord, when my faith is rooted and grounded in your word, when my faith is rooted and grounded, Devla, in you, the storm will come, the winds will come, but we will remain standing. Because you are our rock, Jesus. Usana Maro Foundation. So Devla, give me this anchor of faith. And friends, Mugodel, and family, Devla, that can uphold us, Devla, when we are weak. A spouse, a brother, a sister, to hold our hands up, Mugodel, when we are too weak. And Father, May praise be upon our lips because praise, Devla, opens a door that in the midst of my darkness, Devla, light comes in, the very presence of God. And I can rejoice, Mugodel, because Janav, that you are with me. And so I praise you, Devla, not to get out of it, but I praise you through it. I give you glory. I give you honor, Mugodil, and I give you praise. And we worship you now, Devla, in this beautiful song, Mugodil. Let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.